Let's welcome and listen Dr. Eric Voss. Uh, he is a PhD in lecture in applied linguistic at TESOL program in Teachers uh, College at the Columbia University in New York City. Welcome, Dr. Eric. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you to Alte and to the organizers for this year's conference. Dominique, merci. So thank you very much. I'm going to get started, and uh, hopefully my PowerPoint will be coming up. And may I have? There it is. There we are. Thank you. Today I'm going to be talking about the supporting role of technology in learning-oriented assessment. And so here's the outline. I'm going to start off with looking at some learning-oriented assessment frameworks. And then I'll move on to looking at how technology can fit into a learning-oriented framework. And then a few applications for technology supporting LOA. And then I'll end with a conclusion. So first of all, learning-oriented assessment. So teaching and assessment have been viewed as separate entities for quite a while. And uh, we're looking at ways where we can uh, provide learning opportunities for assessment. So looking at pedagogy and assessment as one entity, we begin with our learning objectives. And through a learning task, assessment task, we provide feedback um, to, um, on the outcomes to support learning. So we support learning through assessment practices. So the primary focus is on the potential to develop productive student learning properties, or processes, rather. And the challenge, however, is to link the types of language assessment into a coherent model that values learning processes and learning outcomes. So first of all, let's take a look at uh, a few of the frameworks that have been introduced for learning-oriented assessment. And uh, one of the earlier frameworks, 2006, by Capel and Carlos, uh, had three components of learning-oriented assessment. First of all, assessment tasks as learning tasks. Secondly, student involvement in assessment processes. And third, forward-looking feedback. So the quality feedback that students receive should help them focus on improving uh, their learning. So looking forward rather than looking backwards for feedback. And although this uh, article was a case study using technology, there's no explicit or guidance to technology in any of the components for the framework. The second framework developed by Purpura and Turner, focusing on learning-oriented language assessment, has many inter interrelated dimensions. There are quite a few. And so the first would be a contextual dimension, looking at the context for the task. A proficiency dimension, uh, elicitation dimension, sorry, proficiency about the language and the uh, knowledge needed for the assessment, the task. Elicitation um, dimension, also other dimensions related to socio-cognitive ability, instruction, effective, and socio social interactional dimensions. So this is quite complex, looking at a variety of different aspects to develop a, a task as both an assessment task and a learning task. And although technology is mentioned in the descriptions of these dimensions, we don't see technology explicitly or guiding us in any of the dimensions in this framework. And the third framework we're going to look at is an ecosystem. And we see learning at the heart of this system as well, this uh, ecosystem. And we have assessment and education. We also have um, a plane between the learner and the social world, looking at learning in the classroom and also outside of the classroom. And once again, uh, technology is discussed when discussing this ecosystem, but I'm looking for something that's more explicit to help us guide our implementation in a framework. So first of all, if we develop a framework that includes uh, pedagogy and assessment, these are pedagogical knowledge and assessment knowledge as spaces, we're looking to combine those. So they're not two separate entities as I showed in the first slide but we're looking at our knowledge of pedagogy and our knowledge of assessment to develop these tasks. We also uh, should focus on our content knowledge. So when we're developing our learning objectives, we want to develop the content, the language, and decide what the students uh, will be learning or being assessed um, in the uh, task. 
Um, and I'd like to focus on the technological knowledge in this presentation because that seems to be missing, again, in, explicitly in the frameworks. So a little bit further in our analysis, we can combine the pedagogical and assessment knowledge into something we might call um, learning-oriented assessment knowledge. I'm going to, however, keep the PAK just as a reference because it refers to pedagogical and assessment together as a uh, pedagogical assessment knowledge, even though I'm referring to it as LOA knowledge as well. And then we have content knowledge, and we'll use the acronym CK. And then for the technological knowledge, I'll use the, the letters TK. And we can represent this in another way as knowledge spaces. And you can see they're color-coded. So in the blue, we have a content knowledge space. And we have our LOA space in yellow, or P-A-K-L-O space. We also have our technological knowledge. And I'd like to draw your attention to these spaces where they overlap, because that's where I'd like to guide your thinking, not just the knowledge about content or pedagogy and assessment um, or technology, but how they int they're integrated and how they overlap. So for example, we can combine technological LOA knowledge overlapping. We have an area here where technologi technology and content overlap. And um, in the middle, we have a space where all three overlap. So that's our goal. Our final product um, is the technological LOA content knowledge. And of course, we have a contextualized circle around it. So everything is contextualized for our specific purpose, for our specific project. And this is similar to a framework that's been used in EdTech for quite a while. And this is an updated version, which just introduced the contextual knowledge. And you can see the term pedagogical knowledge or and pedagogical knowledge throughout. And so if we can just change that to LA, LOA knowledge, it merges with what we are looking at. So how can we, how can digital technology support teachers' implementation of learning-oriented assessment? So it's, um, it's uh, important to remember that the computers don't have a philosophy of teaching and learning. The computers don't think. It's the um, researchers and the teachers who develop computer-assisted language learning applications and conduct research that have the theory and principles of assessment and pedagogy. And pedagogy should always drive technology, never the other way around. So bottom line, technology supports content and pedagogy or assessment, P-A-K. So let's see how we can apply this TPAC framework. And so I tried with T-L-O-A-C-K, but I couldn't pronounce it very well. So we'll stick with TPAC. So we can start off with uh, step one. Um, you begin with your learning objectives your purpose for the assessment, um, what you want the students to learn, what, how you're going to assess them. And then secondly, you select the content. So these are both related to the content knowledge space. And then we have the LOA space, deciding how the content will be taught and assessed. And then the fourth step is selecting the appropriate technology to support pedagogy and assessment. So that's the technological knowledge. And when we put it all together, we find that spot in the middle where they all overlap. And that's where we implement and evaluate our plan. So if we take a look at this and how these are realized, and you can see the red arrow on the left, it's a process. We start with our uh, pedagogical knowledge and our content knowledge, and then we move on to our technological knowledge. And at the bottom, you can see where they start to overlap until we get to the bottom, where we um, end up with uh, the teacher has the sufficient knowledge to design, deliver, and evaluate tasks through technology with appropriate content from the target domain that provides feedback and promotes learning. And when we get to this point, we're implementing, but we're also evaluating. So we might come up with questions through our development of a, uh, an assessment through technology where we might think about how technology changes the construct and how our score is interpreted when we use different technologies for our assessments. So let's go through a few examples in implementing this TPEC framework. Uh, first of all, a listening comprehension assignment. We start off with our content knowledge. And your students are asked to watch a video about a topic uh, at an appropriate proficiency level related to the learning objectives. 
And then we think about our, our technological knowledge. How do we do, uh, deliver that content? So deciding how to deliver the video on a laptop or mobile device, is that, if that's what we're looking to do. And that's our combination of TCK, technological content knowledge. And then we think about our pedagogical assessment knowledge. The instructor has developed questions to evaluate students' comprehension of the video, provide interaction and immediate feedback, and keep track of students' responses and scores. So full plate there. We want to do quite a lot. That's our pedagogy and assessment. And we want to add the technology. So we need to select authoring tools that will help us create a delivery of video with interaction and immediate feedback and keep track of the student responses and scores. So that's our combination of TPAC. And we can put all of this together then, and we might come up with interactive video as our solution. And this is where we overlap these knowledge spaces to come up with our um, solution, our, our final product. And here's where we implement and evaluate. And um, this was part of the workshop that I did yesterday, putting timestamps at different places in the video to provide feedback to the students as they're watching the video. Another example related to task development, we start off with our content knowledge. So there's this sequence, remember, starting with content and pedagogical assessment knowledge, and then adding our technological knowledge to support LOA. So first of all, tasks should be developed according to specific linguistic characteristics and abilities that L2 learners are expected to know and or need to know. So this is our guiding principle for content knowledge. And we can this can be applied to a variety of assessment tasks. We could identify linguistic characteristics for a target domain. We can identify high-frequency academic collocations if we're looking to build a, develop an academic collocational ability test. We can identify level-appropriate reading passages. Uh, we can develop materials to assist learners in hedging and academic writing. So this is based on your identification of the content for your particular purpose. And then we can think about the technology. Well, how can we uh, use technology to support our identification of linguistic uh, features or properties? And so you might decide to use uh, corpus tools. And this is a combination of technology and uh, content, uh, such as a vocabulary profiler to identify the frequency of particular uh, lexical items. or uh, and then we come to the conclusion that the teacher has the technological knowledge to identify the frequency of vocabulary in a text using a vocabulary profiler. So this is an intermediate step because it's a combination of technological and content knowledge. We haven't reached the center of the framework yet. Or you might use concordance tools uh, for appropriate reference uh, corpus. So for languages that um, don't have as, much, as many resources, this could be a project to collect a corpus first. Uh, collect the language that's the target language for your test takers. What are we measuring? What type of language should they be reaching? And we can um, use corpus tools to explore that reference corpus and identify different uh, language patterns or lexical items in that reference corpus. So our conclusion for this combination uh, overlapping spaces of technological and content knowledge would be that the teacher has the technological knowledge to, number one, identify language patterns, and number two, the distribution of lexical items in a reference corpus. And you can see this is an example of different patterns or distributions in different registers on the top left. Let's take a look at a third example. And this example is when we have limited technology, because many of our um, environments are different. They're not all the same. So we can adapt this framework to our individual environment or purpose. And this time I'm starting off with a, um, the PAK, the LOA knowledge. So first of all, the teacher is leading a discussion on a topic in a physical classroom. This was either pre or post pandemic. And students do not have their own laptops. So sometimes technology is limited. They don't uh, have them because they can't afford them or they're told not to use them for, for reasons uh, that the teacher decides. They could be distracting. And but the teacher still wants to get feedback from the, st from the students. So the teacher would like to get immediate feedback about the student's understanding of the topic that they're discussing in class. Um, and they do, the teacher would like to do this by eliciting the responses and collecting individual responses. Now in a classroom or even in this, um, this room that we're in right now, I could ask for your feedback and get, ask you to raise your hands. 
and as a teacher then I'd have to count and I'd have to remember who raised the hand and uh, it would be quite a lot. So we can look for technological solutions to help us and we can apply our technological knowledge. How can technology support um, the collection of individual responses with limited technology? And so with our technological knowledge, which also includes awareness of what technology is available that we can use for our purposes. We might identify something um, such as Plickers, which is a software that is used only by the instructor. You can see here in the picture the instructor is using a, a tablet. But to use this, the instructor first of all has to print out the different codes on paper and distribute them in the class. And depending on what direction the student's holding the code, that's the answer that the student wants to present, A, B, C, or yes or no. And in this way, the teacher is the only one using the technology, then the students are using paper-based. And this way that the, the teacher can collect individual responses and uh, save them for later analysis. And so this would be the, uh, the goal of combining T, P, E, P, A, and C, TPAC. As a fourth example, uh, remote proctoring. Uh, we start off with our LOA knowledge, and so we begin with the idea that the teacher needs to administer an assessment to students at home during a pandemic or post-pandemic. And so we think about our technological knowledge. Uh, how can technology support language assessment administration in remote environments? And we've heard about this at the uh, conference so far. Um, we have different options depending on your purpose, depending on your construct, depending on what you would like to do. One option is video conferencing software. If you'd like to have a human interlocutor and that interaction with a human, this is one solution you could use that uh, utilizes the technology for your purpose. However, if you'd like the interaction just to be human computer, you could adapt uh, an IA-based proctoring software, for example. So you have choices in the technology that you use, and the choices of technology su should support your um, ideas of learning-oriented assessment, your PAK knowledge, and your TK, technical, technical knowledge. So if you went with the AI-based software, uh, there's additional considerations because this is more advanced software, so there's more knowledge that is necessary. With the different choices that you select, the different technological choices, you have to weigh the, different, the, the amount of knowledge that you'll need. So, for example, the knowledge uh, that you'll need is the teacher needs to have the technological knowledge to implement and evaluate this type of remote proctoring. But it's not only the teacher we need to think about, but the test taker. And the student has to have the technological knowledge to interact with the software as well. So we need to think about the technological knowledge of our test takers as well as our own technological knowledge when we're selecting the appropriate technology for our purpose. So if we think about what technological knowledge is, we can break it down into a few different uh, aspects. So knowing what is available technologically, but also the technological knowledge of the teacher, also the technological knowledge of the student, also, technological knowledge that's related to the construct, so being able to type on a computer so that they can write an essay is uh, not technological knowledge that they need to complete the, the task. However, we also have knowledge that's not related to the construct. So if we have the IA-based proctoring and the student's web camera is not working, they need to have the technological knowledge to go into their browser and allow permissions for their web camera to view them. And so that's additional technological knowledge that we need to take into consideration when we're deciding which technology to use for our purposes. So we have on one side the teacher or the test developer looking for technology that fits the purpose of their assessment following the PAK and the TK uh, and PAK and the CK. In the middle, we're looking for technology that can help our um, develop our learning tasks. On the other end, we have the, the teams and the people who develop software. And so somewhere we need to come together in the middle. We need to have the teams develop software that fits with the learning objectives that fulfill the outcomes and the, the, the appropriate 
uh, pedagogical and assessment theory that we're implementing, but we also need these tools for the teachers to use or the, uh, the teachers to author so that it's not too difficult, that can be used by both teachers and students. Okay. So taking a look at uh, the future, we're going to have some technology that we may um, be aware of or may want or may not want. So you may see what I'm showing in this picture already. And if you don't understand yet, um, imagine that we have the teacher is in a physical room with smart glasses. And in the smart glasses, we have web cameras. And in the cameras, if I put this on, it'll facial recognition will identify who you are. And so I, as a teacher, can see your name above your head. And I can also pro decide what other additional information I want to see. So if I just gave the students a, a quiz, I see their scores. And then I can interact with the students in real time with my knowledge. So feedback is not only towards the test taker, it's also towards the teacher. So that's another perspective on the flow of information. So if we are looking at uh, expanding our frameworks for learning-oriented assessment, I suggest that in addition to our pedagogical and assessment knowledge, and in addition to our content knowledge, and in addition to our contextual knowledge, we add another component to make it more explicit and guide our selection and s support through technological knowledge. And so whichever frame framework you are developing or using, you can add a technological component, technological literacy, which includes um, reference to teacher knowledge, student knowledge, and knowledge related to both construct related and unrelated knowledge. I went a little fast. I thought I would be short on time. So I'm going to stop here and thank you. If you have any questions, I'd be happy to take them.